Hello and welcome to my first playthrough of the new enhanced edition of Planescape Torment. Uh, I've been playing uh, Torment Tides of Numenera, uh, which is the spiritual successor to this game. This game first came out in 1999, um, and it is a phenomenal cult classic. And I am just so enthused and happy to be able to play an enhanced edition of it. I'm going to show you why this game is great. I'm going to show you why I love this game a lot, um, and why this game should be an example of games in the future, of how to develop characters, um, engaging narration. Now, it is an older game, so it's not going to be as immediately engaging as some of the, like, the big fancy effects that you're going to see nowadays. But I think it still holds up fairly well, especially for a, uh, you know, a, a role-playing game uh, based on uh, Dungeons & Dragons World of Planescape, uh, which is unlike a lot of other Dungeons & Dragons worlds. Most Dungeons & Dragons worlds are very medieval fantasy. Now this has some elements of medieval fantasy, but it's very, um, I don't even know how to describe it, like a, a sci-fi space odyssey or something, except you're not actually in space, you're just in this really weird, surreal um, world. Um, it's this very high sword and sorcery kind of, of place where uh, um, the gods are basically at your threshold. They're, they're, you can walk to heaven, you can walk to hell, theoretically. But you start in this, this uh, in this game at least, you start in this realm. Um, that's called a, a sigil. It's the the city of doors, um, and that means that there's there's these magical portals everywhere that can lead you to basically anywhere in the entire multiverse. Um, they all have uh, what's known as keys, which is how the portal opens. Uh, for example, you could be taking my uh, hard cider here. It's a dry raspberry. Um, which is pretty good, by the way. This is what I'm drinking tonight, so I do drink every time that I have one of these Let's Plays. Um, and uh, if I have this, and I walk through my, my doorway back there, maybe normally I'll just walk through and I'll just be in the hallway, but if I happen to have this, it's suddenly a portal to, I don't know, um, how about the Abyss? Yikes. Demons. <laughs> mm. At least I'd have some nice raspberry cider, though. Uh, before they tear me apart and ravage me. Um, well, this game's also very interesting in that it's got a very unique character creation process. I'm going to start a new game, um, and to do that, I, all I have to do is click New Life here, which it's, it's like generating a new life, and it's, that has a lot to do with the plot of this game. Um, in this game, you're, you're the main character is known as the Nameless One. Now, you don't get to name him. Um, it's always this guy. It's always male. Um, because it's it's a it's a pre-made character basically, except you get to stat him here. Um, basically, uh, you learn this like right off the bat. You you die a lot, um, but you're kind of immortal. So when you die, you just kind of like wake back up after the rest. Um, now the way that this game works is it has the normal Dungeons and Dragons stats: strength, uh, dexterity, con, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. I like that order they did. It makes it makes a nice star. Uh, normally it goes in that order. It goes Strength, Dexterity, Con, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. So now you've got this, like, Star David going on, if you go that way. Um, I just noticed that. I notice something new about this game every single time I play it. Uh, uh, armor class, that's in... in this was Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, or 2nd Edition Dungeons and Dragons. It has um, a, a system called Thaco, Chance to Hit Armor Class Zero. Um... In armor class 10 was the base. Uh, that That's like generally the worst armor class you can get unless you're like cursed or something. Um, that's just a human standing there with like bare minimum like, oh, something's coming at me, I probably should move out of the way. You know, like not top reflexes, not like hard shell armor or anything like that. If you notice, if I increase my dexterity high enough, it starts to go down. Um, in more modern versions of D&D, Ability scores are a little bit more reactive, um, but in this one, uh, it actually takes a lot to start getting lower armor classes, but Dex 18 would be really good. That's a pretty good armor class for this. Some, something that I would, um, I guess I guess you could criticize this game for, but it's more of uh, a feature than a, than a bug, um, is that 
the Nameless one does never really... It's it, There are ways to get your armor class really low, but a lot of the other characters, um, their armor class is significantly lower. Um, and it's, it's just that you're... A lot of the time, you're, you're gonna end up, just because you run up and talk to people, you're gonna end up being the main tank. You're gonna be the one taking the hits. Um, and if your armor class isn't that good, that means that you get hit pretty hard. Luckily, you have a passive regeneration. You are immortal, you slowly regenerate over time. Um, another way to get regeneration is to have a really high constitution. Um, if you notice here, it says that it goes, there you go, plus four hit points per level. Uh, that's not my regeneration, that's my total life, my life total. Um, if it gets to, I think it's 21 or something like that, it, it caps out at 18. All the scores cap out at 18 at this character generation. But if, uh, if Constitution gets to, I think it's around 21, you start getting uh, the standard health regeneration, too, that, that all characters can get if their Constitution are that high. And that stacks with your regeneration, so you, regenerate start, you start to regenerate super fast. Um, if I remember uh, right, if I get con Constitution 25, 25 is like the hard cap, you can never get more than that. At character generation, 18 is your cap. Uh, but if you have Constitution 25, it just kind of like, uh, heal one, heal one, heal one, heal one, heal one. You know, you just regenerate pretty fast. Uh, <laughs> you just saw me do this gesture. Uh, you'll see the, what, the interface in a second if you're not familiar with it. It'll have like scrolling text of like, actions that you have. Um, and this being the Enhanced Edition has even more features that way. Um, now, Strength is also really good. I would recommend this uh, if this is like your first playthrough and you're not very familiar with the world just so you can hit things faster. It looks like you need all the way up to a 16 to even get a plus to hit. And you have to put a lot of extra points in to get to 1800, which is an odd system that has to do with uh, D&D's um, weird AD&D &D thing. But there's a way to circumvent that. If you just go to 18, and then you get something like, uh, you'll see, uh, I think the earliest thing you can get that gives you a bonus to strength is a tattoo. You can get a strength tattoo. It circumvents all this extra numbers here, this confusing percentile system. Um, now the reason it jumps to 30, 60, 90, 99, then 100, or 00, which is 100, is because that was supposed to be percentile dice that you would roll in 2nd edition D&D, and AD and d uh, if you got an 18 and you're a fighter. Now you start the game as a fighter, but it lets you it lets you just stay at 18 here. Um, which I would recommend, because look at all these extra points I got to put in to get to 0-0. Zero, zero. But it lets you circumvent that and jump over them all the way to 19. If you have 18, and you get a plus 1. So I would recommend, even if you want to have a lot of strength, do that. Now, what most advanced players do is they ignore all those. Even though you start the game as a fighter, uh, what a lot of people do is try to max out their wisdom, because that adds, um, uh, it lets them, you remember your things faster, you get a lot of experience points, even as a fighter, even if you intend to be a thief, um, or even a wizard. Uh, normally wisdom would have, like, that would be a dump stat for fighters, rogues, and, and, and wizards uh, in AD&D, &D &D. but in this game, you're trying to recover your memories, as you, every time you die, um, you lose some of your memories, and if you die, like, really hard, you know, like, you just get destroyed and have to have a long time to get recovered, then you, then you, um, you lose all your memories. You don't even know who you are. That's how this game starts, is, is I've lived thousands of lifetimes. Um, that's why I'm all scarred up. This is my face. You see that? All the scars? Uh, look, my lips are all chopped up. Oh, man, I need some chapstick. <laughs> um... Which is interesting, because you can have Charisma, which was said to be in uh, uh, this version of D&D, was supposed to be, like, your attractiveness. But as it says up there, it's also your persuasiveness, uh, personal magnetism, and ability to lead. So I'm just, like, a great leader, um, I'm a very assertive, confident, you know, that's what, that's what my high Charisma score can mean. Now, a lot of people... People are split on charisma. Like, everyone's like, yeah, you gotta have a lot of wisdom no matter what class you are in this, even though... Even though um, has nothing to do with fighters, thieves, or, or mages, just because uh, the memory thing. You gotta recover your memories, and you gotta have uh, a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of um, talking and clever things to say to people uh, if you have a high wisdom. Um, the same with intelligence. Intelligence also gets you some clever things to say. But really, intelligence is only important if you want to be a mage. Um, as an advanced player in this, I like to be all three, because you can switch between being a, a fighter, uh, a thief, and a mage. Um, so generally, I think I think the spec I would normally do is like 15, 
15. Now, some people say charisma is kind of useless because you could just use wisdom at attributes. Um, so that's a pretty good spec. And then maybe put points in, like, dexterity or something. Actually, I might do that. I might put a couple points in dexterity because I am thinking about making this character an evil thief. Um, do I need that much in... The 12 charisma giving me anything, no? How many in charisma will I need? That's above average, 13. Intelligence. 15 Charisma. You see, there's certain th thresholds for certain things. Now, Strength and Constitution, um, I don't really need for this because I'm sort of an advanced player. You might see me die a couple times, and that's just me being stupid. Um, but, uh, yeah. 18 Wisdom is like a necessity in this game. Um, unless, you know, it's your first playthrough. Actually, I think my per first playthrough, I didn't actually put a lot in Wisdom. I was like, you know what? I want to be strong. I want to be strong. I did, like, 17 strength. I was like, oh, yeah, plus one, plus one. That's pretty good. And then I did a lot in Constitution. I was like, yeah, it's going to be hard to kill me. Um, and then I think I jumped the rest in Dex. I was like, yeah, eventually I'll get that high enough to lower my armor class. And that first playthrough was a lot different. A lot different. Um, now... These beginning stats, um, they're not all you have to do deal with, because as you level, um, it works on a, on a, like a multiple leveling system in that um, you start as a fighter and you level up one, two, three, four. Actually, I think you start at level three, um, but you just keep on going up in, in level. And every time you hit a new cap, the highest level of any level that you've ever obtained in any class, uh, you get an extra point to put in any of these stats. Um, so if I, uh, if I just leveled up, I'll be like, oh, look, I got an extra character point. I'll boost my con by one or something. Um, so that's how you boost your stats above uh, 18. That's how you get them to 25 pretty fast. Uh, there's a couple other opportunities to boost your stats, but generally it's just your, your max cap leveling. Now, if you switch classes, you go back to level 1 um, the first time, but then it, it records how high you've gotten on that class previously. So if you switch back and forth between classes, which is the more advanced way to play this game, um, which can get confusing, you gotta like keep track of it in your head, that kind of thing. Um, you, uh, you go back to the, lo the lowest level, or the highest level that you've achieved in that class. So let's say I made it to level 6 fighter, um, and I've previously been a mage. Uh, once I switched over to being a mage, I was started at level 1 and leveled up to level 4. Let's say I switch back to fighter, I'm level 6 again. And let's say, you know, I level to level 7, and then I decide to switch back to mage, I want to cast some spells, then I'm back to level 4 again. Um, and then I can continue to level and I can get to 12. Now, generally you want to level fighter first because that's your, your base hit points and fighters have higher base hit points. Uh, thieves have like a moderate base hit points and mages have very low base hit points. So you generally don't want to level as a mage even if you intend to be a mage, like switch back and forth just so you have a lot of hit points. Um, but uh, you also have to be mindful of two levels, level seven, Seven <laughs> and level twelve. <laughs> uh, that that's where you, your character will get their specialty. Um, they get an additional bonus upon getting uh, g gaining a stat. Um, whichever class was the first to reach level seven. So if I was level six as a fighter, and then I got to level seven, then I suddenly get my first specialty. Um, now what you don't want to do is get a, sp a specialty in two classes. It sounds like a good idea. You don't want to level to level 7 as a fighter, or then level to level 12 first as a mage. Because then you only get the level 1 specialty of both. What you want to get is a level 2 specialty, because uh, that bonus is greater. So you want to uh, hit level 7 and level 12 as the same class. Now, generally what I do is I'll hit both of those in fighter. I want to hit level 7 and level 12 in fighter, so that I get uh, a huge strength, constitution, and a little bit of a life bonus. But also I'm, I specialize in weapons then. Um, this, that's something you want to do no matter what class you are, switch back to a fighter and skill up in your weapons. Um, because those, those, those actually st stay over even if you're a major thief, which is kind of cool. Um, now those are actually probably the worst stat bonuses, but the weapon training is extra good. Now, um, there's an argument to be said for both, uh, trying to get your specialization in mage and thief. Uh, thief 
gives you nice deck stat bonuses, um, which is great for armor. Like I was saying, armor is a problem in this game. Um, but it also is the only way you can get a bonus to luck. Now, luck applies to, like, any roll. Anything that's a random effect, you get that bonus. Um, so it's just a plus one bonus, but plus one is 5% chance that you would want to have had other, other times. And there's constant combats and, like, random occurrences and stuff. Getting plus one to luck's a pretty big deal. Now, being a, a mage is also really good, because the, the secondary uh, bonus there is, uh, I think it's plus two to intel intelligence, plus one to wisdom, and then plus five to lore, which are huge bonuses. Those are huge, huge bonuses. So there's, there's, that's a great argument to, to try to get your specialization as a mage, too, even though that means that you'll be getting the least amount of hit points at those two levels. Um, anyway, let's make this character. All right, I already stated that I'm going to have an 18 wisdom. That's just how this game rolls. Um, I might do this a little differently. Maybe... 14, 15... Nah, I'll just do it my normal way. 15, 15... Um, and I'll just dump points into, like, dexterity or strength as I go on, I think. Um... Yeah, looks good. Looks good, I shall take it. Um... Gets me a lot of role-playing opportunities. Now, my intent for this game is to be a chaotic evil thief, basically. <laughs> I'm going to be a jerk this game. Normally, I'm a really nice guy. The last playthrough I did, I was a lawful good mage. Um, the first time I played through this, I was a neutral good fighter. And I intended to be lawful good, but it's just so easy to not be lawful in this game. Uh, in these games, you like to loot a lot of things, and if you steal people's stuff... The game takes notice, and uh, it's very difficult to be lawful if you just if you just like walk into a house and loot some stuff, uh, which is common in games. And I like that it keeps track of that, and it's difficult to be lawful. Another thing is you can't be very silly. Uh, early on, like you'll see in a second, there's a time where I see some zombie servants, and if I walk up to try to talk to them, that's considered like a silly action. So if I want to be lawful, I shouldn't be doing that. I should be focusing on the task at hand. Now, becoming chaotic is super easy. All you have to do is lie to people. Lying is kind of easy to do. You're just like, yeah, I'm I'm supposed to be here, sure. You know, like, um, oh yeah, you owe me some money you just forgot. Like, that's something that you'll say to people sometimes. Um, super easy to be chaotic. It's fairly easy to be good or evil. Um, I think it's probably more difficult to stay neutral. Like... Uh, on that axis of uh, the good evil axis and D&D if you don't know there's two there's two axes of alignment there's uh, Lawful and chaotic and there's a neutral in the middle for that I wish there was a different term like they, they both have neutral and then there's good and evil which also has a neutral in the middle It's super easy. It's obvious. What's a good choice and what's the evil choice you help people out you get good um, You hurt people and steal from them and you know you're evil uh, chaotic, super easy. Again, stealing, lying, cheating, doing random stuff. Lawful is you have to keep your word. If you, if you vow or tell the truth, you have to follow through with it. There's, there's Sometimes there will be an option. It'll say, truth, this statement. And then sometimes it'll say, lie, same statement. Um, and if you... Uh, just choosing the lie makes you more chaotic. Um, choosing the lie and then choosing to actually do what you lied about... Um, still is a chaotic thing. To only to be truthful, you have to um, a select the truthful thing and then follow through. Now, it, if you select the truthful thing and then you don't follow through, I'm, that might be evil. I'm not sure. It really depends on the exact instance. I'm sure that there's some workarounds and some inconsistencies, but generally that's the way this game works. Anyway, I'm still in the new life screen. I'm gonna hit accept and we'll move forward. As I said. I am waking up on a slab in a mortuary because I was dead. And this floating skull comes over to talk hey, to me. Chief, you okay? You playing corpse or you putting the blinds on the dusties? <laughs> I thought you were a deader for sure. It feels good. I love more this character. Now, if you notice, I'm zoomed very far out. This is further out than you can zoom in in the normal game, but it's an enhanced edition. It lets you be this panned all the way back so you can see a lot of stuff. Um, this is almost like double the panning out that you get in the original game. Uh, you can see, I'll zoom in closer, you can see some finer detail. Remember this is made back in 1999, 
So it's, uh, I think it actually looks great. I think it looks phenomenal. Um, I, I played the original version, not this enhanced edition, um, not too long ago, and I still, I still was happy with the way it looked. Uh, I've been playing some more recent, um, as some of you might know, uh, um, I played, uh, Torment Tides of Numenera, and I think this game almost looks better than it. I'd say they're very comparable, and that, that came out this year. Uh, so that's 18 years apart, and I, I think the graphics are comparable, honestly. Um... Just a different style. Alright, now, there's some voiceover. We just heard Mort talk, and I love Mort. Mort is so... Oh, I love Mort! He's one of the most iconic characters ever. And he's just a floating skull. You know, it's like, how weird is that? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep up with the reading in this, because there's a lot of reading in these types of games. What? Oh, maybe I should do my, um... Uh, my name is... My name... Uh, <clears throat> Let's see if I can, I can get that low. What? Who are you? I'll get better at it as I hear the name of someone's voice. Uh, who am I? How about you start? Who are you? Oh, damn, I'm terrible with Mort's voice. <laughs> I asked you first, Skull. I'm gonna be kind of a jerk in this run. Normally I'm a nice guy. That's why. Yeah, and I asked you second. What's your name? <laughs> I'm giving him a weird accent. <laughs> You first, Skull. It's the last time I'll ask. Tch. You're tighter than a wet rope. All right, I'll be the nice guy here. Name's Mort. Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? I don't know. I can't remember. You can't remember your name? Heh. <laughs> well, next time you spend a night in this burg, go easy on the bub. Name's Mort. I'm trapped here, here too. Trapped? All right, now, uh, something about the, the language in this game is there's this um, uh, slang that they have here in Sigil. It's um, like uh, a knight in this burg, burg being like, you know, this is the area, you know, like here in this, uh, um, the burg, the, 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 the zone, you know. Easy, uh, go easy on the bub. He's talking about drink. He thinks I'm, I was drunk or joking that I was drunk. Trapped. Yeah, since you you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's the chant. Chant being, um, rumor, talking, you know. I've tried all the doors, and this room is tight, locked tighter than a chastity belt. We're locked in? Where? What is this place? It's called the Mortuary. It's a big black structure with all the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. <laughs> the Mortuary. What? Am I dead? Not for where I'm standing. You've got scars aplenty, though. Looks like some Burks painted you with a knife. <laughs> All the more reason to give this place the laugh before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars? How bad are they? Well, the carving on your chests aren't too bad, but the ones on your back... Say, looks like you got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. Spells out something. Tattoos on my back? What do they say? Heh. Looks like you come with one with directions. <clears throat> Let's see. It starts with I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of sticks wash, but you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is a journal that'll shed some light on the dark of the matter. Ferrod can fill you in with the rest of the chant. He <laughs> If he's not in the dead book already. Ferrod, does it say anything else? Yeah, there's a bit more. Let's see, it goes on. Don't lose the journal or we'll end up in the sticks again. And whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens to you. They'll put you on a quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you, read the journal, and then find Ferrod. No wonder my back hurts. There's a damn novel written there. As for what journal I'm supposed to have on me, was there one with me when I was lying here? No. You were stripped to the skins when you arrived here. Besides, looks like you've got enough of a journal penned on your body. What about Farad? Do you know him? Nobody I know, but then again, I don't know many people. 
Still, some Burks got to know where the, the, to find Farad. Uh, once we get out of here, that is. How do we get out of here? Well, all the doors are locked, and we'll need the key. Chances are one of the walking corpses in this room has it. Walking corpses? <laughs> walking corpses? Walking corpses? Yeah, the mortuary keepers use dead bodies as cheap labor. The corpses are dumb as stone, but they're harmless and won't attack you unless you attack first. So I should attack one of these corpses and loot it for the key. Well, before you do that, arm yourself. I think there's a scalpel on one of these shelves around here. No, nope. search the shelves in the room for a weapon. Attack the zombies. Yeah, yeah, I can equip it. I'll show you how to do that. All right, I'll look for one. One last thing. Those corpses are as slow as molasses, but getting punched by one of them is like being kissed by a battering ram. If they start getting an edge on you, remember you can run, and they can't. Use it to keep some distance if you need to recover. Uh, which is good advice. Oh yeah, it says that actually. Alright, thanks for the advice. Because I can regenerate. Let me see. Oh, yep, I can zoom right in. I think, um... This is about the panning that I would have normally. Now it looks like the scrolling is a little slower than it would be normally. Let me check my stats here. Yep, third level, I was right. Looks Mort, Mort starts at second level. Okay, he actually starts lower than me. Now I'm gonna have to change some settings here. Gameplay settings. Um, nope. It saved it from my last um, playthrough here. Um, something you weren't able to do in the earlier one was you. Uh, a lot of games let you set your HP to max. Now, it's... I recommend doing this. I mean, if you want the most pure second edition or AD&D experience, you could shut it off. But whenever you level up, you roll a die, basically. A D10 for, uh, for, a, fight, for a fighter, a D6 for a thief... D4, D4, oh, that's so low, for a, for a mage. Uh, meaning that you can roll a 1, no matter what, you're, even a fighter or mage, whatever, you can always just roll a 1. And that's how many hit points you get, just 1. Um, now, your attacks also do dice, so if you just gained a bunch of hit points, if you leveled 3 times in a row and got 1 every time, that's 3, that's three life. 3 levels, you get 3 life. Um... A normal D6 can easily take that all away from you. So, uh, yeah, I like to set up HPs to max. Um, I even do this in a lot of my D&D games. Maybe not max, but at least high average. I'm like, just just take this number. You you roll plenty in this game. You don't need to be rolling how many hit points you have. You're a hero. Uh, Gorazon, of course. Heal on rest, yeah. I don't see any reason not to rest until I'm fully healed. There's not a lot of time restraints in this game. It seems like there should be, but there's not. There's not a lot of time and restraints in this game. Um, smooth area transitions. I don't know what that means. Um, it's an enhanced feature. Okay, I'll take an enhanced feature. Um, see if there's any graphics improvements here. Contrast. Grayscale to pause. Zoom lock. Done. Actually, I was wondering if there was it in here. Mouse scrolling speed. I want to increase that, I think. Um, back. There you go. Yeah, that decreases it a bit. Yeah, it was a bit slow earlier. Uh, now something else that you get in this game is tab. You couldn't do this in the original version. You just had to scroll over things to see it. But now if you hit tab, which didn't do anything earlier, you can now see uh, what your... whose name, what their hit points are. Uh, this It also defaults to this. What you'll see down here is it just shows like... Um, a rating bar? I don't see the purpose of that. I mean, maybe if you want to be masked from the fact that there's numbers going on and there's rolls, but I don't think that's too much of an immersion breaker, honestly. I mean, who has a scroll bar for life anyway? Um, uh, maybe if it was like a description or something. Maybe if it, you know what, if it, if there was like a physical thing on your character, like if I, my arm fell off and I'm like all bleeding, you know, that would be pretty cool to, for non-immersion breaking. Um, but uh, yeah, just give me the numbers. That's fine. I like the numbers better rather than this weird colored bar. Um, uh, something else that you could see is that uh, that you don't get this in a lot of modern games, but you did in the older games, is you can set the formation you have for the people. I can have them walk in a straight line. Uh, and you notice there's six potential slots. I can have them, actually you can't really see that with just two people, but I'll, if I get more I'll show you these different formations. 
Uh, especially once I get six. This one's funny, the, the S. Oh no, it's not, it's just following me. That's really cool, actually. I like that. I like the follow, I might keep that. I didn't know that was even an option. Um, but it's always been an option, so. Oh, none. What's none do? Oh, they just walk to the, oh, they just cluster. No, I like the follow. Okay. Abort current action. Okay, so if we tell them to go to abort current action. Oh, that's cool. Uh, there's probably a hotkey for that. Um, but generally what I do is just hit the space bar to pause time. Uh, which is important in these types of games, because I can give them commands. I can say, like, attack this guy. Or talk to him. Uh, yeah. Attack. Attack him. But then I can say abort action. Abort action. See? No combat. That, you hear that music? That's the combat music for this type of game. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run around and collect some stuff. Uh, oh! Right away I found the scalpel. This tab thing is very useful. Oh, why am I walking over to the stand? That was weird, I don't know why I was walking. Bandages? Bandages are the simple way to heal. Now, in most D&D games, you have to get healing potions or something, but this gives you, like, a little neat thing of just healing three, which is a little low. Um, remember I was saying that, like, rolling ones three times in a row would be bad and getting three hit points? That's because, you know, that's that's just such a small amount of hit points in this game. That's why I always recommend that you... Piercing. I guess piercing... Okay, because I think my... Yeah, my fist does a one, one two, three a crushing damage, so I th think... Zombies, it's better to slice them, I guess. Although I think bashing damage works better against skeletons, which we'll find soon. But I think against the zombies, you don't want to be bashing. Did I check this one? I think I did. I did. Okay. Anyway, let's, let's get through this first combat. Um, I think this is the zombie I want to talk to. Examine the corpse. Oh, and I went straight into combat with him. What happened there is I said, I need that key. You're not long for this world. Um, and some some con uh, uh, um, responses in conversation will end up um, starting combat. So, as this one just did. And it looks like Mort's not fighting yet. I have to tell him to fight. I'll say, attack this, attack this zombie. There we go. He helped me out immensely. If you see the scrolling numbers, and then you saw I got some experience points for that. Uh, okay, more. Pick up the key for me. Eh, maybe I don't like this following so much. I'll just put us in formation again. Um, why not staggered? Yeah. Alright, now I can get out. What's this door? Does this door open? Okay, this door is locked and we'll need a key. You see that the message scrolls up there. What about this door? Can I open this door? Nope. Um, now, in game design, um, this is directing me this way. Like, there are other doors and I can unlock them. But it's saying that I have to explore all the other areas. And, oh, look, there's a scripted event here. Psst. Some advice, Chief. I'd keep it quiet from here on. No need to put on any more corpses in the dead book that, that than necessary, especially the femmes. Plus, killing them might draw the caretakers here. I don't think you mentioned it before. Who are these caretakers? I don't think my voice is being gruff enough for him. They call themselves the Dusties. You can't miss them. Let me, let me adjust this voice, too. It's hard to go back and forth between the high-pitched Mort voice, Hey, I'm Mort! And the, oh, I'm, I'm the nameless one. I'm the nameless one. I've got a really deep voice, which is gruff and rough. Um, they have an obsession with, bl with black and rigor mortis in the face. They're an addled bunch of ghoulish death worshippers. They believe everyone should die, sooner, better than later. I'm confused. Why do these dustmen care if I escape? Weren't you listening? I said the Dusties believe everyone's got to die, sooner, better than later. You think the corpses you've seen are happier than the dead book, than out of it? The corpses I've seen here 
Where did they all come from? Death visits the plains every day, Chief. These shamblers are all that's left of the poor sods who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. Enlighten me. Who are these caretakers? They call themselves dustmen. You can't miss them. Oh, I already said this. <laughs> Before you said something about making sure I didn't kill any female corpses. Why? What? Are you serious? Look, Chief, these dead chits are the last chance for a couple of hardy bashers like us. We need to be chivalrous. No hacking them up for keys, no lopping off their limbs, things like that. Last chance? What are you talking about? Chief, they're dead. We're dead. See where I'm going? Eh? Eh? <laughs> no. No, I don't, actually. Chief, we already got an opening line with those limping ladies. We're all dead. We all died at least once. We have something to talk about. They'll appreciate men with our kind of death experience. Wait, didn't you say before that I'm not dead? Well, alright. You might not be dead, but I am. From where I'm standing, I wouldn't mind sharing a coffin with some of these fine sinewy cadavers I see here. Mort st starts clacking his teeth. As if anticipation, as if in anticipation, I'm sorry, I'm cracking up here, he's just a weird character. Of course, the caretaker would have have to part with him first, and that's not likely. Oh, he mentions, like, okay, that's a, that's a great design of dialogue. If you want to come back to something so that it, it opens it up so that I can re-ask a question I wasn't able to ask earlier, you just throw in that extra line, like, yeah, I'm really into these ladies, but you know the caretakers want to have part, want to part with them, and, and then I get to ask again who the caretakers are. Uh, that's just good writing right there. Um, now, that's really weird that he wants to get with the corpse ladies, but I see where he's coming from. He's dead, they're dead, you know, they've got something in common. Um, but he's, that's also weird. I mean, would you call someone a necrophiliac if they were also dead? You know, that I don't know. <laughs> it's like, do you, do, you, do you call an animal, when animals have sex, is that bestiality? I mean... Yeah, but no. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, All right, I'll try to remember that, just so we can end this conversation. Look, Chief, it's obviously that you've got a little addled after your kiss with death. So I got two bits of advice for you. One, if you got questions, ask me. All right? To speak to a party member, select talk option on the quick menu. I'll show you how to do that. All right, if I have any questions, I'll ask you. Second, if you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down. Whenever you come across something that might be important, jot it down so you won't forget. If I had that journal I was supposed to have with me, I'll do that. Start a new one then, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here. To last you. Here to last you. <laughs> around here to last you. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. That's better. All right. It couldn't hurt. I'll make a new one then. I think I'm sounding more like Batman. Use it to keep track of your movements. If you ever start to get cloudy on important things, like who you are, or more importantly, who I am, use it to refresh your memory. To access your journal, select the journal button at the quick menu. Your journal will automatically be updated throughout the game. All right, I got it. Let's go. Updated my journal. Updated my journal. Wow, I'm going really down far. Okay. Um, journal. This is the journal. Um, I can search terms. Uh, journal... I think I can enter search terms. I thought there was a place I can write completed. Beasts. Mort. Oh yeah, you, in this screen you can see the characters in the game. This is Mort close up. Yeah, he's kind of a wisecracking skull. Nameless one, that's me. Urgh. Um, I th thought in the original game I could just write text. Maybe this is it. Okay. No, I guess I can't. Um, anyway, this I'm going to show you how to talk to people. You just hit the dialogue button. Now, talking to myself doesn't do anything, but if I talk to more, um, I can ask him all kinds of things. Uh, I can rehash that female corpse's line. Um, I can ask him to read the tattoo on my back again. Actually, I'll ask him how to use bandages. Well, you use them. Staunch the bleeding and all that. 
Well, okay, that was easy enough. Um, anywhere, anyway, I'm going to leave it here. This is the beginning of the intro. I'm going to go ahead and save it, um, take a little break, and we'll be back in a minute. Um, I'm the Fire Eating Dragon, and uh, this is my favorite game. Bye! <laughs>